Hey guys, Rick and Duke, welcome to another episode of Warhog Words of Wisdom. So again, I'm going to throw up the format or throw the format around a little bit. Uh, So this episode, we're going to entitle Decision Making. So it's kind of my insight, just how I make decisions. Hopefully you can make some better decisions along the way. So for those of you new to the show or new to the On the Range universe, um, Warhog Words of Wisdom, just a little offshoot of that. So you're probably asking, who is this Duke character? So Duke was my combat assault dog. I lost to Osteosacoma, 5 July, 2021. He started the show. Uh, We're going to keep his memory alive, keep going. A couple of things. If you guys want to learn more about Duke, go to warhog.com forward slash in honor of Duco. Tell you all about it. Uh, we started up a nonprofit in conjunction with Scott's Wish. So we've got that going on. Um, don't forget, check out kellydefense.com. Make sure you guys are signing up for our newsletters. Keep you abreast of what we got going on. Don't worry, we're not going to inundate you with a whole bunch of spam, junk mail, uh, pertinent info as far as what's going on. If you guys like the show, do me a huge favor, preferably at that safe spot. Hit that subscribe button. Leave us a rating review. I don't care if it's at a... Uh, I don't care if it's just a thumbs up emoji, leave us something, tell your friends, tell your family, tell strangers, man, just get the word out there. Help us spread the word of on the range podcast. And of course, words of wisdom and vantage point. Um, Last but not least, you know, you can always go to patreon.com forward slash on the range podcast, early access to our shows uh, behind the scenes, our vlogs, training tips, uh, and most importantly, a bi-monthly interactive Zoom call with me and Mark. We pretty much solve all the world's problems with our patrons. So absolutely a fantastic time for all my patrons. Thank you guys for all your support. So kind of jumping right in, guys. Uh, let's talk about decision making, right? And I think it's a, a critical task that's been kind of lost this day and age. So I'm going to do something probably slightly controversial. That's all right, because that's the way we roll here at On The Range Podcast. Um, I'm going to use the whole China virus process. And I got it, guys. are probably going, what? I said, I'm just going to use what went on. Again, your decisions, your choices. Uh, and just tell you how Rick kind of went about my decision-making process with all this craziness. Now, I have to caveat. I am not a microbiologist. I am not a scientist. I am not a doctor. I'm just a guy that served 29 years in the Army, Uh, a little bit of NBC, so nuclear chemical biological training. And really, that's kind of what I uh, used as my staple, and I'll just say some common sense, uh, to draw my own conclusions for all this craziness that went on. So let's think about it. You know, first and foremost, um, we had some dramas where... um, you know, wasn't quite sure what's going on. Um, you know, we've got this crazy virus floating around. So what we're going to do is, um, you know, CDC comes out and says, hey, let's issue some guidance where we're going to tell people to wash their hands. Okay, that's cool. I can kind of go with that. Don't need to be told, but um, we'll take that kind of first step. And then You know, second step is now you get going from the government to the media starting to push their agenda. And then what winds up happening is, you know, now all the craziness starts coming out, right? So um, this thing is going to sit there and kill you, yada, yada, yada. And we start instilling panic in the public. But here's the key thing. Um You guys have to remember that there's got to be some common sense applications here applied. And this is where it goes, right? So then they come out and say, hey, you got to stay six feet away. Okay, cool. So in Rick's mind, if I have to stay six feet away from my fellow human being in order not to catch this virus, my decision making process is telling me, man, this thing has got to be short lived. I mean, six feet, it's, its lifespan has got to be short. But then, you know, magically we start getting, well, you know, if it gets on cardboard, it gets extra superpowers. And if it gets on stainless steel, it's got extra superpowers. And I'm sitting there going, good Lord, man. Okay, not making any sense. So, you know, somewhere in there, it's like, hey, need everyone to hunker down, stay at your house, you know, and that'll kind of stop the spread. And you can sit there and go, all right, yeah, you know, in, in theory, that makes sense. 
uh, less people out about, less people in contact. Okay, uh, you know, you can support that one. But there was this always this constant underlying fear, in my opinion. And I'm like, all right, what are we in fear of? What's the what's going on? And really, it was to me, it was the media just pumping out false information. So we didn't know what was right, what was wrong. And again, I went back to kind of what I know. So when the whole mask thing came out, <clears throat> and I got it, it's controversial for some, <clears throat> use it, don't use it, you know, it, it's your personal choice, right? But I'm sitting there, again, using my experience from the Army and going, man, if I need to put a mask on because this thing is so bad, why don't I have some type of protective filters on there? And again, this is just Rick's mind thinking, trying to make my decisions on this whole process. So I should have some type of filter that I know filters out particulates at whatever size. Um, I don't know when I was, you know, kind of doing some research. I'm not going to lie. I didn't put a whole bunch of effort into it. Uh, I don't know or don't remember what was the size of the China virus, you know, what it was. So here's an example. They say, all right, put a mask on. Okay, cool. They didn't care what it was, just some type of face covering, which, oh, by the way, at least in the state of North Carolina, uh, is technically illegal. And we'll get to that one here in a second by state statute, by the way, or state legislation, excuse me. Um, so it's all right. Put this thing on your face to stop this particulate either from you going out or you coming in, however you want to look at it. And I'm sitting there going, all right, let's just use some uh, decision making common sense process. Let's just say hypothetically the China virus is a two nanometer micron, whatever size. But your weave of your material is at four. Well, what's it stopping or what's it doing? You know, Rick's mind is like, well, that ain't working. If if I, you know, if the government's telling me that I need a mask, I probably need something that's got some filters that knows what it's filtering out. So again, going back to the army, yeah, you'd wear your pro mask, but it had a filter on there that would filter out all this rubbish. And again, there were different filters for different applications. But that's my whole point is now you're just expecting me to use a piece of material to save my life because I'm going to die or that's what you're telling me. OK, again, just from Rick's mind, just again, my decision making process does not compute, does not make sense. OK. So, you know, then we kind of fast forward, um, you know, still keep your distance, still wear your mask, still do this, still do that. <clears throat> but this thing's still ramping up. Well, this ain't making sense. So finally, the the magical elixir comes out. And I think, in Rick's opinion, the government made an epic failure. And here was the failure. They called it a vaccine. So again, in Rick's mind, this is just Rick making decisions, right? Um, man, I got my smallpox vaccine. Haven't got smallpox. Um yellow fever, you know, polio, all, all these things. Again, it's so you don't get it yet. Here we are giving this quote unquote vaccine, bad choice of words. Uh, I'll get to that in a second. And people are still getting it. Now you need a booster. Now you need this. Well, in Rick's mind, that's just telling me, Hey man, your magical elixir is not working. Now I'm not saying take it. Don't take it. Hey, that's your own personal choice. Uh, I don't believe you should be forced, but that's your own personal choice. Fully support that 100%. Now, with all that being said, we magically see, again, Rick just making his own uh, decision-making process that, wow, during, was it 2000, 2001, magically, heart disease is no longer in the country. Uh, I think we went from like 600,000 to like nothing. Um, the flu... I think it was like 70, 100,000 cases, whatever it was, down and nothing. And again, don't quote me on my numbers. I'm just kind of <clears throat> throwing some stuff. But you saw every other potential thing that could kill a human being go away. Everything was coronavirus. And I'm sitting there going, all right, well, let's look at the signs and symptoms. Very similar to common colds, other things out there. Uh, the flu. Yet it's similar to the whole, you know, 
PTS and TBI where the signs and symptoms are parallel with one key factor. And that is typically on PTS, you've got these reoccurring nightmares. Um, but they both parallel the same. So you can sit there and give my signs and symptoms. And most people, if they're not savvy on one or the other or both, they're going to diagnose you one way or another when it could be the other. But I digress slightly. But again, it's just, it's getting that, <clears throat> that whole decision-making process. So why, here's a question for you. Why do we call the flu shot, the flu shot, and not the flu vaccine. Hmm. There's something to think about because, again, they're taking a guess what the strand will be. So how much more better received if we said, hey, here's the China virus shot versus the China virus vaccine, would more people have been receptive? I, I, I don't know. Uh, just food for thought, you know, again, looking at decision-making process, just Rick from the outside thinking, again, these are all just my opinions. Um, but words are powerful. People, if you sit there and say you're giving me a vaccine, I'm expecting that I am not going to get whatever jab you're giving me. Um, so, you know, all that being said and done, how were you during this whole thing making your decisions? And again, it can be decisions on anything in life. I just used kind of the whole China virus deal as my place to sit there and go, all right, let's 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 think about it. Let's make sense. Um, let's kind of shift gears for a second from that. You know, I think we kind of beat the dead horse on that and kind of how I made my decisions and where I sat on it. Um, but here's a prime example. So you've got, you know, a buddy of mine, Tony Cowden, who's running for the House of Representatives here in the state of North Carolina. And I forget, old boy, that he's running against. Um, but again, he's starting this mudslinging campaign because that's what good politicians do, right? You're not going to talk. Uh, here's my record. Here's what I've done. Here's what I'm doing for my constituents. Oh, novel concept. It's all about the other guy and how bad he is. So this cat goes out and starts making allegations against Tony, uh, some type of criminal activity. Hmm. Let's think about it. 25 year veteran holding a security clearance. I know within special operations, all of us got a clearance at some point, depending where you're at in the pecking order, whether you've got a secret, you know, TS, TSSEI, you know, uh, whatever it may be. But you're going through checks, right? Sitting there making sure, hey, man, you're not sitting there, uh, some criminal. Yet this guy in his decision making process probably failed somewhere to go, oh, he's got a clearance. Hmm, interesting. Um, but again, it just goes into that. You know, it's you can look at we make decisions every single day during our life. So what are you doing to kind of make those decisions? What are you doing? Um, you know, what's your decision making process when you're sitting there doing it? Some are pretty easy, right? Um, think about it. I need some item at the store. Okay, cool. Sit there, grab whatever and go. Or are you actually sitting there? looking at the contents to go, what is it? Maybe you've already done your research. You know exactly what's in there. Yep. This is the, the brand, the product I'm doing, but you know, whether you're going to the store, buying a house, getting a car, buying some type of electronic, I hope you're doing some type of backside research, you know, whether it's all right, Hey, here's the specs, here's the models. If you don't understand what this means, you're doing some searching, preferably on a couple different sources. And again, it just helps you make that decision on whatever you're doing. Um, you know, working out's a prime one. Everyone's got these, hey, here's my workout. Here's this. Here's that. Cool. Is it going to work for you? Um, does CrossFit fit your lifestyle? Does functional fitness fit? I mean, what what does? Um, no different firearms, man. That's another huge one. Oh, what fire am I going to get? What? How does it fit? How does it carry? How does it do this? Again, decisions you've got to make. So I say all that, guys, just because I want you, you know, the viewer, listener out there to make the best decision you can, regardless what that decision is on. Just don't sit there and go, hey, because Rick says you need to wear a Warhog shirt every single day because it gives you magical powers. I hope you're doing your research um, to go. Hey, what magical powers do I have instilled in my product line? But it's just it again, 
super far outside the realm on that one, but I hope you kind of understand and chuckling a little bit. It's trying to get you guys to think. Uh, back in the day, the old witch doctors, magic elixir, hey, this will fix this, this will fix that. You know, it, it very well might, but then again, it might not. You, the individual, or you, the individual with your family, have to make those decisions as far as what's going on. So I just hope that kind of breaking some things down, figuring out a good way to make decision-making processes for you will just better help later on in life when things come up. Um, it, you guys have just don't always go at face value for what you're being told. I, I think at the end of the day, that's really it. Um, if I were to sit there back in the world I used to live in, hey, commander's intent. I want you to do X. Roger that. Wasn't like how to get there. Now you got to kind of figure out how are we doing everything to meet the intent that he wants. So, all right, we're going to go hit this target. How are we getting there? Are we walking? Are we flying? Are we jumping in? Are we driving? I mean, all these different things, right? Because you're weighing out what's the pros and cons to each decision you're making. And in that case, it's a multifaceted because you might sit there and go, okay, cool. The end state is to do this. However, how are we just going to get there? Well, you know, if we fly, we got weather to deal with. Uh, maybe we do, maybe we don't. Hey, maybe the aircraft has the range, maybe they don't. You know, all these different things you got to take into account. And I will just say, you know, that was the one beauty with the military is you've got to make decisions all the time. So you got to weigh everything out. And the whole military's got their decision making process, how that all goes about course of action, lay things out. Hey, one, two or three, which one works out best matrixes, all this other stuff. Do you always have to go that in depth? Nope. You know, did I do that when I was making my own assumptions for the whole China virus deal? Nope. I just applied kind of what I knew, did some backside research and said, hmm. This does not compute, does not make sense. So all that being said, guys, you know, work on that. Just don't go at face value for what other people say. Just uh, double check, do your own research on the backside. And again, just make, it'll make it easier when you're making those decisions, you know, kind of boom, flow right along. You got your process, easy day, all day long. Biggest thing, don't fall for the hype of what the interweb's telling you. Don't fall for the hype of what the media is telling you. Make your own educated decision and go from there. So again, guys, in closing, just uh, make sure you guys go over to warhog.com, kellydefense.com. Do me a huge favor. Sign up for our newsletters. That way I keep you abreast of what's going on. I always let people on my newsletter know when I've got early class or when my classes are coming out prior to just doing a uh, open enrollment announcement like on IG or some other craziness. Um, you can support the page. Patreon.com forward slash on the range podcast. Again, bi monthly uh, Zoom calls with me and Mark interactive. So we actually sit there and talk to you guys, listen to what you got going on, solve all the world's problems. And last but not least, guys, please do me that favor. Whenever you're in that safe location, if you're listening while you're driving, uh, hit that subscribe button. Heck, if you listen to um, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean, hit them all, man. Do me a favor, please. Do us a favor. I just ask that one little bit of support. Leave us that rating and review. I don't care if it's just a thumbs up emoji. Do something uh, just to help beat that algorithm. So hope you guys have a fantastic day. And oh, by the way, it would not be a good Warhog Words of Wisdom with your final accountability check. Did you work out today? If not, man, you still got time. Get it in. Don't forget, if you're carrying a firearm, make sure you're doing your dry fire training. Don't forget, try to get out to the range as well. Uh, and then last but not least, kind of playing on what we talked about before, I hope you're being a good person. Look for those acts of kindness you can give to others, and man, life becomes easy. So appreciate all your support, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Crush the day, crush the week. Uh, and you guys are just, I can't thank your support enough. God bless you. God bless your families. God bless our troops. And God bless the United States of America. Warhog and Duke out.